Hello and welcome to Jep's Outdoor Adventures. I'm your host, Jep. In today's episode, we are going to be doing another jugs test, this time testing out Buffalo Bores 147 grain plus P hard cast for the 9mm. I've had a lot of requests to test out this ammunition. I've even talked about it on the channel before. Uh, one of my very first caliber discussions was on the 9mm for bear, and we did talk about these rounds because this is what Phil Shoemaker, I believe I got his name right, if not, I apologize, uh, used went up in Alaska and he took down a 900 pound brown bear with it uh, which is what spurned the video so I figured today we finally have a good opportunity to film a video and so that's exactly what we're going to do now the farm that we're going to be using today is a Springfield XD9 with a four inch barrel great nine millimeter just got the plank with it a little bit and really like it a little bit better than the Smith & Wesson m and Shield, at least for ammo tests, because that gun that we used for the last 9mm video has only a 2-inch barrel, if I remember correctly. Uh, so 4 inches, a little bit better for these types of videos. Gets a little bit more velocity, a little bit closer to what most people are going to be carrying anyway. So hopefully that does a little bit better for you guys. So let's now look at the first barrier that we are going to be starting out with. Okay, so here we have the standard bone barrier jugs test. Uh, right up front here, we have uh, two pieces of uh, shop towel here. Uh, sometimes we use faux wool, sometimes we use this. It's going to be very similar for our testing. So as you can see, it's peppered with some black dots here. Uh, that's just to represent where we've hit it in the past. So we wanna make sure that we hit brand new spots. Uh, that way we don't mess up the testing. So that's why they're marked here. We're going to be aiming for some nice fresh spots on here. Uh, they are glued onto a quarter inch thick piece of masonite. This is going to be simulating hide. Uh, then we have our first jug here. Uh, we're getting into a habit of just having one jug up front instead of two on either side, just to make sure that when we hit this jug, typically the other two on the sides just fall off and they'll burst open. That's kind of a waste. So we're just having one up front. Uh, then we have two three-quarter inch thick pieces of plywood. This is going to be our bone simulator. And then as you can see, we have three jugs going widthwise. That's to make sure that if the bullet tries to um, go off into a different direction, that we should be able to stop it. Uh, and it works really well, typically. Uh, we are obviously wanting it to stay in the center, have good inline penetration. But this way we can still capture the bullet nine times out of 10. Uh, and we have six more water jugs going down the length, so seven in total. And then we have something right here I've been working on. This is what we usually use, just a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood at the back just to stop the bullet. Um, but I've been working on a way to keep it secure so that way it doesn't just fall off the table because typically we have to just uh, kind of lean it up. This way it's actually rigid so we get to see if the bullet hits this, will it penetrate through, will it just stop? Kind of a good way to figure out how much energy the bullet has by the time it gets to this. So. That's about all we have for this right here. We're just gonna take a step back and see how it does. Here we go. Okay, first shot here with the standard variation of the bone barrier. Here we go. Okay, let's check that out. Okay, so as we can see, we got a good center mass shot. Blew open the jug a little bit. believe that is our entry point right there. Trying to hold the boards together, I apologize. There's our exit point. And I believe that's the exit point for the second one. Set that aside. Okay, so here's our second jug, third jug, fourth jug. This one got squished just a little bit. Doesn't mess with the performance, but it does make it a little, oh, funny looking. Oh, there we go, okay. Looks like, hit the seventh, but, yeah. Getting wet here, let's look around here and see if we can find it. Okay, so, we found a little flake right there. Not sure if it's from this bullet or not, but turns out the bullet landed right down there on the ground. I'm gonna set it down so you can see here. Here it is. I'm thinking that had to be from a different bullet because I don't really see any real deformation on this guy. It doesn't look like it flaked apart really. So 
if anything that was superficial if it actually was from this bullet but i do not suspect that it was so not sure what to say about that little piece of metal there but as far as this guy goes it looks like it's intact we're going to give you an up close picture of it here and then we're going to move on with the testing all right second shot here with the standard bone barrier here we go Check that out. Looks like we got a good entry point here on the jug, blew it open, but looks like the round hit sideways. Gonna try and show you here. That doesn't look right to me. Here's some, <laughs> that's a big exit wound right there. Dented in on this guy. So, Set that aside. Here's the second jug. Here's the third jug. Starts to travel upwards. Yep. Okay, here's the fourth jug. And get you a peek at it. There is the bullet. Now, just to show you guys, that right there is a good, what, 23 inches of penetration there. And the first shot went to about, oh, I don't know, 43 inches. So, big difference there. I'm not sure what made it go off this time compared to the first shot. That's not so good. So we're gonna pour the bullet out, take a look at it here. So a little bit difficult to see. We'll get a good picture of it here for you. But to my eyes, it does not look like it lost a lot of weight at all. Looks pretty intact like the first shot. Okay, third shot with the standard variation of the bone barrier. Uh, this is where we're gonna see if that uh, tumbled shot is an outlier or something that we should expect. So here we go. I saw a poof of dirt right back that way, so I have a feeling it shot out. Let's see. Looks like we got a good shot here. Good center mass, blew open the first jug. Uh, looks like this is where we hit. So there's the entry point. There's the exit point. I think it's right here anyway. So trying to keep moving here let's see uh, okay so it looks like the fifth jug here well actually let's go back here seems like the fourth jug went kind of through the handle I don't know how well you can see that into the fifth jug it looks like it pressed up against this guy yeah, you can see kind of rolled off of it into the sixth jug here on the right hand row and into this one here. Yeah. Went out. So I was right. It did go. So it's right out there somewhere. Don't know if we'll find it again. So I don't know how much I like this. I do like that it went through. But I don't like that it tried to go off to the side. So I'll let you judge for yourselves whether or not that's okay. We're going to have to move on here with the testing. We'll go on to the second variation of the bone barrier here. All right, guys, so here we are with the second variation of the bone barrier jugs test. Uh, we did move the masonite over just a little bit, so that way we'll be hitting new spots again. But the only real difference is this guy right here. So instead of two three-quarter inch thick pieces of plywood, we have one half inch thick uh, heavy-duty cutting board. This guy is something you'd see in a butcher shop, very heavy-duty. It's caused some rounds to hit sideways. It's, it's a really interesting test. Uh, 
really puts the bullets through their paces. So we're going to take a step back and see how well the 9mm does against it. So here we go. All right, first shot here with the second variation of the bone barrier. Here we go. Unfortunately, it looks like that camera was not recording, so I apologize about that. But, oh well, what are you going to do? So here is our entrance point. And here is our jug here. Blown wide open. There's our exit point. Set it aside here. Here's our entrance point here on the second jug. And I think, oh yeah, it looks like it went off here and to the right hand column. Yeah. All right. So you're on the fourth jug. Looks like it indented onto the fifth. Let's see, just to, on the off chance, oh, getting wet here, on the off chance it went in. Does not look like it did. Kind of suspected that. So, it looks like on the fourth jug here, it went out here somewhere. I am unsure as to exactly where it went. And because of the camera here not recording, we don't have a good slow-mo of it, so I apologize. I slacked off there. Anyway, that's going to be, uh, let's say right about 24 inches. 23 and a half inches if you want to be a little more exact. It did still have energy though. But anyway, we're going to take a step back and see if we can get another shot. See if we can actually get it to go in line. Okay, second shot here with the second variation of the bone barrier. Here we go. Let's check that out. This time I remembered to turn on that camera, so I'm happy about that. So there's our shot. Split it open a little bit, but not too badly. There's our entrance point. See, there's a head-on entrance. Here's one hitting a little bit out of side. Not out of side, at its side. So this one's hitting at an angle. This one's hitting head-on. You can see a little bit of a difference there. So looks like we got a better shot on this one. There's our exit point as well. Set this behemoth aside. I will cut it down at some point, guys. I just didn't have an opportunity yet. Okay, two, three, four, five. Looks like exit out of the fifth one into the sixth. Jug on the right-hand column once again. Kinda has a liking for this column. into the seventh jug as you can see looks like it went out so it's going to be out here somewhere again really hate it when that happens but at least we've caught two bullets so far so i am happy about that i think we'll get a bullet on our next shot here though with the ceramic tiles uh, we don't have a lot more jugs left over so we're going to have to go on to that one so here we go Okay, so here we have our third and final barrier for today. This one has quickly become my favorite, and I think you'll see exactly why, but we'll have to see. Uh, right here again, the only thing that's changed is the actual barrier right here. Uh, here, instead of two three-quarter inch thick pieces of plywood or one half inch thick cutting board, we have two quarter inch thick ceramic tiles. Tried to get the ugliest ones I could, because I really don't want to you know, break something that somebody could use, but this is an excellent medium for the 40, the 45, and then for the 10 millimeter, it caused a good bit of damage. So I'm interested in seeing just how much it causes to the nine millimeter. So let's step back and see what's gonna happen here. Here we go. All right, first shot here with the third variation of the bone barrier. Let's see how it's done here.
That actually shot them out. Wow. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. So, as I suspected, we wouldn't get a lot of penetration here. Third water jug. Yeah, it's bleeding water, but just barely. Let's see here. First shot. Did good. It looks like it hit a little sideways again. Man. I know what I've talked about with the uh, round nose bullets, but geez. And there's a bullet's fragment right down there. Let's see, did anything go into this one? Uh, I'd say no. I think we just beat up this bullet so bad it stopped right away. So here, yeah, see here's part of our jacket right there. Here's the other part of the bullet right there. And there's like a little tiny fragment right there, but that's really not much. I don't think I really see anything much here to talk about. So we'll get you some good up-close pictures of this guy. I'm curious to see how much weight was lost rather than retained. Okay, now we have the chronograph. Let's see what kind of results we get. Here we go. 1089 It did uh it did not feed 1089 Okay, let's try that again there. 1103 1089 1101 11.05 and 10.73. All right, guys, we're back out in the lodge. I am really sweaty right now. It's really hot out, and honestly, as much as I love this dog, he's a pain in the butt sometimes. He's 140 pounds, and I had to pick him up and carry him in here because when I tried to walk him in here, he acted like I was going to kill him. Kept trying to hide underneath the table, trying to run out. It's like when we tried taking him to the vet once. Tried getting him into the back of the Jeep. This guy can tackle better than a linebacker. He uh, tried jumping out of there so many times, I barely was able to lock him in the back to get him to the vet appointment. <sighs> anyway, yeah, you're cute. Yeah, you're also stubborn as all get out. Just like me. So getting into today's video now, getting back on topic. Uh, the rounds came in at, with the uh, chronograph results, came in at 1,089 feet per second, 1,103 feet per second, 1,089 feet per second again, 1,101 feet per second, 1,105 feet per second, and 1,073 feet per second. Now, once again, I forgot to look at the advertised velocity, so I'm just going to put it right here. Uh, I did look at it before, and these are very comparable. However, I forgot to actually write it down before coming out here, so I do apologize, guys. But as you can see, it did pretty well there. Now, uh, the average foot-pounds of force is something we'll get to in a moment. First, we need to look at the weight retention, or lack of, for the bullets that we recovered. So, the first one came in at 147.6 grains. The second came in at 148.2 grains. Now remember, these are supposed to start out at 147 grains. So 147.6 and 148.2. It's pretty interesting. Uh, and then the third came in at 116.8 grains. That was the uh, two fragments combined there. Uh, now when you look at the amount of weight that was lost, it says uh, after doing the calculations, this was uh, the results I got, it says it lost 20.54% of its original weight. So it did not retain a lot, but uh, 116.8 was actually better than I expected it to be, so I have to give it that. So now let's look at the average foot-pounds of force and the Taylor KO that you can expect from these rounds. So first off, we take the average weight in grains for the bullets. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the two that were non-deformed bullets, came in at 147.9 grains in average. 
Uh, and then we take the average feet per second, 1,093.33 feet per second. And that comes out at uh, 392 foot-pounds of force per shot on average. Now let's look at the Taylor KO, which takes into account not just the weight and the speed, but also the diameter of the bullet. It's a very accurate way of measuring caliber to caliber how much force you're looking at on average. Uh, if you try to skew the test results, they'll be skewed. A lot of people will try and throw in a Toyota Prius in there. Just really weird stuff. I don't understand it. I told you guys that before, but I've seen some really odd comments on that thread. But when you're looking at caliber to caliber, it's a very good way of finding out how hard that round is hitting. So the Taylor KO for this round is just eight. Nothing much there. Uh, the 10 millimeter that we just tested out, also from Buffalo Board, the 220 grain hard cast, came in at, let me see here, a Taylor KO of 16, I want to say. Either 15 or 16. I think it was 15, actually. Uh, but doubtless, it was a good bit higher than this. But, you know, honestly, that's not too bad. So, uh, as far as the actual testing results that we got, just looking at how they impacted and whatnot, I think this round did okay. It was a little bit more squirrely than I'd like it to be. Uh, obviously, if the round traveled in line a little bit more often, was a little bit more consistent in that regard, I think it would be perfect. But uh, overall, I'd say it actually did pretty good. As opposed to the Underwood Ammo 140 grain Extreme Penetrators for the 10 millimeter, which also hits sideways at times, this one I feel did better simply because, you know, the 10 millimeter is a wider bullet. You'd expect it to do better. Uh, and when it hits sideways, that was really underwhelming. Uh, now, granted, it didn't do that all the time. However, if you're going to be carrying around out there for bear protection, you want it to go in line every time, if possible. And a caliber like the 10 millimeter, you expect it to do that. So hitting sideways was really kind of a um, lackluster performance. I was not very impressed by that. Thankfully, there's other rounds out there like the 10 millimeter loadout from Buffalo Bore. I just talked about the 220 grain hard cast. Steinel also makes a 220 grain hard cast, which I tested out not that long ago. It was very competitive, a little bit less expensive. Uh, I really like that loadout, by the way. But uh, with the 9 millimeter, you know, besides this round, you're only looking at maybe two or three other options that will work for you. So that kind of changes things. We did just pick up Underwood's hard cast. Also 147 grain. Uh, I expect those to do a little bit better against the ceramic tile test, given some of the other rounds that we've tested out from them. But at the end of the day, you know, 9mm is still just 9mm. You know, you're looking at a small diameter bullet, and you're looking at one that doesn't have a wide, flat, meflat. If this is all you have, or it's all you're comfortable shooting, you need to practice with it, and you need to load it up properly, and you need to carry it in a good holster. And if you're in an area that has animals maybe 400 pounds or less, basically the size of a large man, give or take, you should be okay. Would I prefer something bigger? Yes. Do I carry something bigger myself? Yes. But if that's all you have, absolutely this will work. I have no problem with it. You know, this, this didn't do too badly. But if you're going into Alaska, do not carry this. Carry something better. Uh, I'm serious about that. Like I said there, you know... Brown bear, grizzly bear, polar bear, they're nothing to scoff at. And, uh, you know, as much as I would like to say that a mag dump will do you just fine, I don't really think so. Uh, although you can certainly get lucky and, and get some good shots and you'll be okay. Something 40 Smith & Wesson on up is, is definitely preferred. Actually, 10 millimeter on up. You know, I, I'd say, generally speaking, the 357 Magnum or 45 ACP plus P is your bare minimum, literally. Uh... And if you can, carry something even bigger than that. But not everybody can. Not everyone can shoot a 44 Magnum. If it's all you have, it's all you have. You don't really have much of a choice. If you load it up with this, I think you'll do just fine. But uh, is it a round or caliber even that I would recommend going out there and purchasing for bear? No. So, you know, it can be a little bit tricky to discuss this because each individual circumstance is going to be different. If you're in an area with only black bear, you don't really have a lot of aggressive ones out there. You know, you're always careful to keep your head on a swivel. You don't just walk around blindly and get yourself in between a rock and a hard place. You know, this will probably never even need to be used. But on the off chance that you will need to use it, you need to load it up properly, and I think this will do just fine. 
So I hope that makes sense, guys. Uh, I had a good opportunity to film the end of this video here. I've been editing quite a bit. I've had quite a tumultuous week here, so I'm sorry if I got anything a little messed up here. Uh, you know, I, I've been dealing with YouTube trying to delete my videos. Uh, two videos in a row were deleted, one after the other. Uh, they were both older videos, five years old, coming up on six years old now. So, you know, at this point, I've made a second channel. It's just Jeps Outdoor Adventures backup channel in parentheses um, where I'm just uploading my videos to try to get them onto another channel just so if this one goes down at any point you can find me there uh, at whatever point I'm ready I will leave a link down below or maybe even at the end of the video and you can go over there and subscribe just to make sure that if anything happens here you'll see it there but uh, yeah it's it's annoying there's there's no good reason for what YouTube has done, and uh, quite frankly, it's uh, it's quite rude. It really is. When I appealed the decision five minutes later, they denied it. What does that tell you? So anyway, I do have a Utreon channel. Link is down below for sure. That way you can get all my videos if YouTube deletes both channels by chance. Whatever happens, you can find me there. Uh, it's a lot like YouTube. It's much better than Rumble trying to find your way around. It's still not great, but it is better than Rumble by far. Rumble sucks. I've been trying to use it for a while now, just trying to find my way around. It ain't worth it. I'm sorry. I know it sounds bad. I know some guys use Rumble. I'm sorry, but I just can't stand it. So anyway, getting that out of the way, uh, curious to hear what you guys think about this round and its performance. If you've used it before, Please let me know your thoughts down below. Please feel free to hit that like button, that subscribe. Uh, please feel free to share this video. Click that share button down below and then copy the link. That way YouTube knows you've shared my video. It helps me get some better analytics on the channel. Uh, and share it wherever you'd like or to whomever you'd like. I really do appreciate it. So guys, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Anyway. I love this stuff. No, stop. No, 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 no. no. Oh, yeah, you're trying to close up. Just stay. Just stay. No. Here, No. Hey. Hey. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. So, one hand on the dog, the other one on the paper here.